Can you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. But it is not full screen yet. Mm. Now? Can you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am, we can see the screen. Can you see the full screen? No, ma'am. No? Ma'am, you will have to share full screen mode in the meet instead of a tab. Now, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, great. Full screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good. And uh, recording is also started? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your help because this new generation knows everything, you know, and I'm really thankful for your, you know, support. So I will need support from time to time, uh, just in case of I stuck up in this Google Meet. I'm not very used to Google Meet, OK? So coming to our main topic, we are trying to uh, learn uh, during the two sessions, you know, two hour session, that what is regulatory affairs, how many regulatory bodies are there, and how important is this function, you know, the regulatory affairs. First, from your end, I would like to uh, understand that do you know what is regulatory affairs? Let us try to make this session very interactive. You know, do you know what is regulatory affairs? Ma'am, we uh, see to the uh, work that is done by the other departments, and we make uh, proper documents for the uh, for it, and we forward it to the FDA or the other main bodies. Okay. Anyone else would like to say what is regulatory affairs? Ma'am, basically it is like we put regulatory standards for every drug for basically human use after that. Okay, you are a little bit correct, but still can someone else would try to it's to standardize the industrial process and make sure all protocols are appropriately followed. <laughs> I see. So you all are uh, guys into final year B farm, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. And you are learning what all other subject apart from this regulatory affairs, pharmaceutics, pharmacology, pharmacognosy, farm tech, and what else? Correct me if I'm wrong. Ma'am, you're correct. Any other subject? Ma'am, cosmetics, suitics, IPR. Great. Uh, somebody has kept their, uh, you know, mic on. Uh, like they have not unmuted. I could see hear some noise in between. Okay, so regulatory affairs, you know, affairs means what? You know, affairs is a big word, right? So regulatory affairs is nothing but collecting, analyzing, and communicating risk and benefit of pharmaceutical product to different agencies across the world. Okay, regulatory affairs means what? Collecting, analyzing, and communicating risk and benefit of pharmaceutical product to different agencies across the world. Understood? 
Yes, ma'am. Collecting means what? You have to collect the information regarding quality, safety, efficacy for pharmaceutical product and communicating risk and benefit of that product to different agencies. Different agencies means this world comprises of 257 countries, more than 257 countries. And this world is divided into regulated and semi-regulated market. Okay. When we talk about regulated market, means we have to follow very stringent standards, regulations, laws, everything is very strict, strictly monitored with respect to quality, safety, efficacy. And any health authorities' main objective is to protect public health. And in order to protect public health, we have to meet those three requirements that is quality, safety and efficacy. Okay. So the entire pharmaceutical industry, the drugs, drugs product or anything which we manufacture, which is consumed by a patient like us, we are consumers, right? We are also one of the patient because whenever we have headache, whenever you will have stomach pain, back pain, we have to have medicine, right? We are used to now. So drugs, medicine, are very popular we pop up all the tablets capsule varieties of dosage form whenever we have any symptoms like headache stomach ache or any kind of disease you know the diabetes heart attack or any any kind of disease so the drug regulatory bodies the main function is what to protect public health how do they protect they make the laws they make the standards they make the regulations you know so whatever uh, standards, regulations, laws, act, you know, Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940, these are all are published for what? To protect public health. If any regulatory bodies would not have been there, what would have happened? People would have died, correct? Uh, the drugs manufacturers would not have control. They would have manufactured any kind of medicine, adulterated medicine or any kind of, there would not be any control. So there are standards, there are ICH guidelines, there is a GMP, GLP, GDP system, correct? GMP means what? Yes, ma'am. Good yes. manufacturing practices. Correct. GLP, good laboratory practices, correct? GCP, yes, good clinical practices. GDP, good documentation practices. So when you enter into the pharmaceutical world for the, your job, all this terminology will be heard day in, day night. GMP, GLP, GDP, GCP, you know, ICH, all country specific requirements like US FDA, Europe, UK, MHRA, ROW. So all these are markets. Okay, understood now regulatory affairs? Yes, ma'am yeah thank you so all this content which i have gathered for you guys the source is acknowledged everything is available on the internet only you should understand from where do i get the exact information otherwise it is freely available information on internet now everybody is aware of since you are going to become a pharmacist like me right so you know what is meant by drug Am I right? What is meant by drug? Yes, ma'am. In a layman language, can you explain someone what is drug? Ma'am, anything that uh, benefits the health. Okay. Anyone else? Hello? You have to speak, huh? otherwise I won't understand whether uh, I'm speaking in the right terms and whether you are in a position to understand my lecture or not. Only one person I could hear, right? What is your good name? Ma'am Kruti. Kruti. Thank you, Kruti. You are only talking. That means you are only having good attention towards what I'm speaking. Others are not. Ma'am, any drug or substance which change the pharmacological action. 
Okay, great. Very good answer. Anyone else would like to try? Apart from these two answers, anyone else? So what, what is the drugs definition given under Drugs and Cosmetic Act? Tell me. All medicines for internal or external use of human being or animals. It's not necessary that only human beings are consumed drugs, right? Animals are also given the drugs, medicines. So all medicine which can be used internally or externally. Here also you understand, internally also we take the medicine, externally also. Am I right? Now there are so yes, many patches available externally. You know, pain painkillers, pain balms, pain ointments, creams. There are so many things are available which could be used externally for the human beings and animals. So, and all substances intended to be used for diagnosis, treatment, mitigation or prevention of any disease or disorder in human beings or animals. So, this is the exact definition of the drug and one should understand this definition in detail. Okay. So, regulation means what? Regulation means to regulate, to control something so that it functions properly. Correct. Suppose if you are walking on the road, if the RTO is not the rules, right? You have to uh, walk on a footpath. You have to, whenever you want to cross over, there are crossover lines. Correct? You have to watch for the signals. How many signals are there? Red, green. Orange, right? Yellow. So you have to monitor all these things. Why there are rules? Because from the safety point of view, correct? If the vehicle stops as per the uh, signal given, then only you have to cross the roads. Am I right? And that's how the safety is very, very important in pharma industry also. Safety is extremely important. So whatever you are manufacturing, whatever you are planning to sell your drug in whichever country, whether it is India, Europe, US, Canada, wherever you want to go, you have to stick to standards. You have to follow regulations. Okay. And that's why regulation means what? To control anything which goes into our body, right? which can be used internally, externally, the drugs, the medicine. I hope it is pretty clear now. Yes, ma'am. So, as we all know, being a pharmacy, that drugs play important role in the health and economy of a country. Correct? Right? So, pharmaceutical drugs are available from number of sources. Am I right? It's not only one source. Multiple sources are available to ensure that, that they meet prescribed standards, to ensure that safety, efficacy, and quality of the drugs, as well as accuracy and appropriateness of the drug information available to the public. Okay? So what is the key function of regulatory agency? Agency means I'm talking about USFDA, UKMHRA, CDSCO. What is our Indian uh, regulatory body called? Anyone knows? Hello? What is our Indian body? Tell me. CDSCO. Huh? CDSCO. CDSCO, right. DCGI. So India is CDSCO. Our regulatory agency, you should remember, you should be proud of our India, right? When we talk about US, it's US FDA. FDA is a common term, Food and Drug you know, Administration. FDA is common. When we talk about Indian FDA, FDA is also used, right? FDA term. But our body, when we talk our agency, it is CDSCO, okay? When we talk about UK, UK MHRA. So like that, there are multiple bodies across the globe, multiple agencies, or some people call it that MOH, Ministry of Health, HA, Health Authority, 
okay so these are the common terms uh, you should be aware of familiar uh, with these uh, terms because you have selected regulatory affairs as a elective subject correct so key function of drug regulatory agency is what product registration first of all you have to register your product as per the country specific regulation okay so regulation of drug manufacturing importation and the distribution so after product registration what happens you have to regulate your drug manufacturing importation and distribution of those drugs so without manufacturing you cannot sell your product right so you have to control import and export or the distribution of those drugs then also we have to monitor the adverse drug reaction correct right? you might have heard about pharmacovigilance nowadays see extremely important function the role played by the pharmacovigilance expert why because lots of adverse event adverse uh, reactions are happening due to consumption of drugs and that's why we have to monitor so everywhere the pharmacovigilance centers are there okay so once you register your product you get the approval you start manufacturing you start distribution right once you start distribution people are consuming our drug and then the adverse uh, reaction or the adverse effect are monitored through pharmacovigilance system then there are uh, some other functions like licensing of premises and persons and practices so you need a qppa uh, you know what is qp qualified person okay so a pharmacist can become a qualified person when he or she has you know enough experience in that particular area then main goal of agency is to what guarantee the safety efficacy and quality of the available drug product so these are the key functions of drug regulatory agencies what quality control drug information center drug laws drug regulatory boards and the drug regulatory agencies and these are the uh, some regulatory authorities around the world okay so if we talk about europe europe has uh, itself you know more than 30 countries almost 27 plus 3 that is 30 country so you can see each country has their own own what agency okay so regulatory body i mean to say if you go to armenia you know you can uh, you know deal with this authority if austria belgium you can see there are different agencies okay i hope it is clear say yes no yes ma'am okay good see north america health canada usa has us fda australia new zealand medsafe so we will include some uh, you know major uh, regulatory bodies not all it's not possible to cover all agencies okay so you have to understand each health authority though it could be indian cdsco or uk mhra or us fda each health authority's main objective is to protect public health okay so these are all region so north america australia uk middle east you can see central south america all these are different regions okay and you have to uh just understand uh, what are the different regulatory authorities around the world asia pacific you can see bangladesh bhutan china india indonesia japan taiwan sri lanka thailand vietnam so these are all you know southeast asian countries there are 10 southeast asian countries like singapore malaysia thailand laos you know philippines uh then vietnam those are 10 countries which falls under southeast asian countries so when you are into regulatory affairs you have to remember about quality safety efficacy along with 
the registration requirement of each country that is country specific product specific guidelines country specific rules and regulations okay the standards and what else the regulatory system you know some country may have different type of regulatory system so you have to understand all those topics in detail okay fair enough now you understood how many bodies are there and yes, uh, yeah and this uh, whole world is divided into regulated market and semi regulated market so when i talk about regulated market that means strict regulation standards are followed when i talk about the semi regulated market that means there is some liberty and some relaxed guidelines are there okay now we talk about registration of process in the uk united kingdom okay we'll go one by one but i will not cover entire 257 countries okay so you once you understand you know major regulated and semi regulated market how do they uh, register the product then it would be easy for you to understand other country specific requirement but anyhow during the academic uh, you you will not be required such a depth knowledge but when you will be in industry those skills are required so that's why we uh, we are skilling institute you know the we skill employees so that they get the job properly and they function properly during their jobs so let us understand registration process in uk so mca was uk licensing authority part of the department of health responsible for safeguarding public health by ensuring that all medicines meet acceptable standards responsible also for clinical trial exemption or clinical trial certificate so uk mhra mhra means what can you tell me mhra Hmm? Can someone Google and find out what is MHRA? Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. Correct. So always remember, UK in London, UK means MHRA. Now due to Brexit, UK has separated. So they have their own agency, the big body. It is UK MHRA. Okay. It was formed in two thousand three with the merger of. MCA and MDA. So MCA is what? Nothing but it is a medicine control agency and medical device agency. Okay. So MCA and MDA merged. Merger took place in two thousand three, and that is why it it was formed as MHRA. So now UK MHRA is separated due to Brexit, and UK MHRA has he, itself is an entire you know big body. Otherwise, earlier UK MHRA was a part of European Union, okay, Europe, that is EMA, European Medic Medicinal Agency, EMA, EMA, okay. So earlier UK MHRA was a part of EMA, but now it is separated due to Brexit, and it has their own big agency. In April two thousand thirteen, it is merged with the National Institute of Biological Standards and Control, that is NIBSC, and was rebranded with MHRA identity, being used solely for the regulatory center within the group. Medicine and Healthcare Product Agency, see, that is why I asked before I give this full form, I ask you, what is MHRA? MHRA is what? Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. so this agency is an executive agency of the department of health and social care in united kingdom which is responsible for ensuring that medicines and the medical devices work and are acceptably safe correct so always remember any health authorities main objective is what to protect public health and to protect public health of course everyone has to be ensure that their products are safe safe for human safe for animal 
any medical device which you are going to manufacture should be safe correct so in case of medical device also safety integrity performance is seen and now in as per mdr 2017 the medical devices are also controlled as good as dr as per drugs and that's how this mdr 2017 rule published okay and all medical devices manufacturers are also in transition to you know uh, change their licenses from you know this mdd to mdr so this mhra uh, you know the medicine and the healthcare product regulatory agency regulates medicines medical devices and blood components for transfusion in the uk so these are some major role of uk mhra operate post marketing surveillance for reporting investigating and monitoring of adr what is adr adverse drug reactions okay so please pay attention you will be asked certain mcq multiple choice questions okay if someone would like to take the notes you can just write down the notes also so assessment and authorization of medicinal products for sale and supply okay then third operate a quality surveillance to sample and test medicines to address quality defects and to monitor the safety and quality of unlicensed product monitor and ensure compliance with statutory obligations relating to medicines and medical devices and regulate clinical trials of medicines and medical devices so these are the major role of uk mhra i hope it is clear if it is not clear please raise your hand and talk to me okay yes ma'am and these are the uh, different marketing authorization procedure which is followed in uk mhra similarly it is followed in europe also europe also follows this four different system for regulatory affairs okay so what are these two different uh, system so the regulatory affairs is what the centralized procedure decentralized procedure and nationalized procedure and mutual aid so in europe all these four entire authorization procedures are available okay so uk mhra also follows exactly similar to europe you have to understand four different regulatory system that is centralized procedure decentralized procedure mutual recognition procedure and the national procedure okay so what is the difference between these four types of regulatory system so these reg regulatory systems are different from each other how they differ from each other national procedure means what one single application to one country okay one single application to one country so whenever any pharmaceutical uh, manufacturer want to enter into europe or uk mhra they have to go through one product one country that means one application to one country so you can enter through national procedure okay then you can slowly slowly go with the mutual recognition once you are enter you can enter into other countries as i said europe comprises of 27 plus 3 country that is almost 30 countries okay so after this national procedure you can go to mutually recognized procedure in which you can select other countries okay multiple countries but what is the centralized and the decentralized procedure centralized procedure means what centralized procedure means one application but the entire europe you know entire europe that means now suppose in case of disease like covid what has happened covid pandemic it has killed so many human beings so many people 
and in such pandemic situation you can go through centralized procedure that means suppose if biocon or serum institute of india or anyone pfizer covishield or uh, uh, covaxin anyone would like to register their product they can go through centralized procedure with single ap application but they get the marketing authorization in entire europe so this centralized procedure is applicable in case of what rare disease then all these emergency use medicines then biotech product then uh, this one uh, rare disease anti cancer anti aids all this such type of uh, medicine you can go through what centralized procedure that means one application entire europe okay decentralized procedure means what decentralized means you have to select one country as your rms that is reference member state and multiple country as your cms cms means concerned member state okay so in decentralized procedure again i will repeat in decentralized procedure you have to select one country as rms and multiple country as cms that is concerned member state and you can book the dcp slot okay and you move ahead that means if a company wants to enter into multiple countries at one shot multiple means 5 6 7 countries because out of 30 countries suppose you have selected only 3 to 5 countries so you select this path as decentralized procedure you select one country because you have already entered through nationalized procedure right one country one application so you can select that country also as your rms reference member state that means it would become easy for you to you know get the approval in other countries i hope it is clear it is bit complicated but please try to understand now try to read this sentence one by one can someone read for me centralized procedure kruti yes ma'am yeah the centralized procedure is one which allows applicants to obtain a marketing authorization that is valid throughout the europe via single application to emea correct the features yeah. results in a single authorization valid in europe application evaluated by an assigned rapporteur mm -hmm. timeline ema opinion issued within uh, 210 days and submitted to european commissions for final approval required for medicine of biotechnology process processes cancer hiv or aids diabetes orphan medicines etc perfect so clear so it requires 210 days for the application approval okay the getting marketing authorization via centralized procedure now someone else can read mutual recognize recognition procedure please who else is there please i need your attention ha huh? hello yes ma'am yes yeah, please i'll read it out yeah yeah a uh, mutual recognition procedure so uh, the mutual recognition procedure allows applicants to obtain a marketing authorization in the member state that is concerned member state other than the member state that is reference member state where the drug is previously approved features applicant submits identical dossier to all europe member states in which it wants authorization including required information now as soon as one member state decides to evaluate the medicinal product at which point it becomes the rms it notifies this decision to other member states which then becomes the cms to whom applications have also been submitted now rms issues a report to other states on its own findings generic industry is the major user of this type of drug approval procedure 
and this process may consume a time period of 390 days great thank you so much what is your name dear ma'am pooja pooja so pooja and other uh, student have you understood this mutual recognition procedure if i say yes i will go ahead if not i will again repeat if you want yes ma'am understood mutually recognition procedure that means you have already entered into europe right through the national procedure so you can submit this applicant submit identical dossier to all europe member states in which they want to enter correct they want to market their product they want to get the marketing authorization am i right and that's how we have to select what one country as a rms that is reference member state and other country in which you want to register your product you can select as a cms cms is a concerned member state okay now come to nationalized procedure i need third person to read this where is that boy hello yes ma'am yes you can read please what is your name ma'am gaurav gaurav yeah gaurav you can read please nationalized procedure hmm nationalized procedures the nationalized procedure is one which allows applicants to obtain a marketing authorization in one member state only in order to obtain a national marketing authorization an applicant must be submitted to the competent authority of the member state the features are as follows new active substances which are not mandatory under centralized procedure can obtain marketing authorization under this procedure timeline for this procedure is 210 days okay great thanks gaurav now i need fourth student to read the decentralized procedure i need volunteers more volunteers ma'am uh, but then what is the difference between centralized and the nationalized procedure centralized is one application for entire europe okay and here one application to one country only dear you cannot enter into entire europe okay okay it, it is only for one member state i hope it is clear to everyone yes ma'am i will again conclude okay Uh, just uh, let uh, someone read this decentralized procedure first i need fourth volunteer decentralized procedure yeah. using this procedure companies may apply for authorization simultaneously in more than one eu country for products that have not yet been authorized in any country mm-hmm. based on the assessment report which is prepared by the rms and any comments made by the cms ma should be granted in accordance with the decision taken by rms and cms in this decentralized procedure features generally used for those products that has not yet received any authorization in any eu country time required 210 days yeah so in uh, suppose if you don't want to enter like one single country uh, and one uh, uh, product you can directly go through decentralized procedure wherein you can uh, select one country as rms okay and multiple country as cms and then the based on this assessment report you know given by this rms and any comment uh, made by other cms marketing authorization you can get it only thing this is just costly affair and time consuming process but uh, the uh, main advantage is what at a time you can select multiple country as cms and move ahead okay so all big countries like big mnc multinational companies uh, apply through this route decentralized procedure okay and the time is 210 days so i hope it is pretty clear now centralized means what 
one application entire europe but centralized procedure is required for what rare disease orphan drugs uh, uh, emergency uh, medicinal use okay then decentralized means you can select one country as rms and multiple country as cms and you can enter via this route nationalized means one single uh, member state only you can enter at a time okay so any new drug substance which you want to try you know because what happens in dcp you have to invest a lot that investment uh, should not go waste that is why to get a confidence of european regulatory system people uh, go through this national route also okay you can uh, go through this route then mutually recognition also uh, you understood once you have you know uh, registered via any other route you can go through uh, same mrp mutually recognize the identical product in other country other eu member state in which you want the marketing authorization understood but in mrp can you repeat this mutual recognition one see uh, uh, see here it is strictly written the mutual recognition procedure allows applicants to obtain a marketing authorization in the member state that is concerned member state other than the reference member state okay suppose in national procedure you have entered into uh, netherland say for example you have filed your uh, product and uh, registered into netherland okay now you want to enter into other countries now you built a confidence ki now i have entered into europe i got an approval into netherland but what about other 27 29 countries so slowly slowly you go through other countries okay so applicant should submit the identical dossier in to all eu member state okay in which it was it wants authorization so suppose other than netherland if you want to enter into other countries okay with the same identical dossier you are allowed through this mutual recognition procedure okay so how do you, yes, how do they evaluate how do they evaluate as soon as one member state decides to evaluate the medicinal product at which point it becomes a rms it notifies this decision to other member states okay which then becomes the cms i got my point and to whom applicant application have also been submitted so at the same time you select the cms correct you have selected five more countries or you can select two two also it depends on you your company regulatory strategy okay so rms and cms coordinate with each other they notify their decision to this rms and then you get the approval so rms issues a report to other states on its own finding so rms means reference member states has their own review and own findings observation about that product about that dossier right application means what you submit the dossier to okay ma'am yeah so rms issues report to other states on, and it's uh, along with its finding and that is why you know mainly generic industry use this mutual recognition procedure okay national now i hope it is pretty clear for four procedure yes ma'am now we slowly move to australia see now once you understand uk mhra exactly similar is european procedure so i need not to repeat for europe okay or do you want me to repeat again all this centralized decentralized national mrp no ma'am correct and that's how this regulatory affairs once you understand the country specific product specific regulation it becomes easy for you you know to handle country because in any pharmaceutical industry this regulatory affair department plays very important role okay but understanding each country specific requirement regulatory system is equally important when you want to become a regulatory professional so coming to australia 
Australia uh, Health Authority, it is called TGA. TGA means what? Therapeutic Goods Administration. It is a unit of the Australian Government Department of Health and Aging. Okay. It's responsible for administering the act which came into effect from 15 February 1991. The responsibility for the regulatory control lies with the Therapeutic Goods Administration as the National Regulatory Authority for Therapeutic Goods. What is the role of TGA? Can someone read it out? TGA carries out an overall control through five main processes. Wait, I will read this role and then I will ask someone to read. Okay, under the slides. So main role is what? Pre-market evaluation and approval of registered product intended for supply in Australia. Development, maintenance and monitoring of the system for listing of medicine. Of course, everything in Australia. Licensing of manufacturers in accordance with international standards of GMPs. Post-market monitoring through sampling, adverse event reporting, surveillance activities, and response to public inquiries. Okay. Then the assessment of medicines for export. So it is pretty clear Although all these roles are common to all health authority, whether it is UKMHRA, whether it is TGA or anything else. Now regulation of clinical trials by TGA. How does it happen? Okay. So how it is happened? There are two schemes. One is CTX scheme. That is clinical trial exemption and CTN that is clinical trial notification. Okay. What is CTX? Can someone read? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please. Clinical trials of medicine and medical devices conducted in Australia are subjected to Commonwealth government regulation administered by the therapeutic goods administration these are two schemes to conduct clinical trials clinical trial exemption scheme ctx trial sponsor notifies the tga of the of their intention to conduct a clinical trial using an unapproved therapeutic good hmm. clinical trial notification scheme ctn the tga does not review any data relating to the clinical trial the CTN form is submitted by the investigator on behalf of the sponsor to the HREC, Human Research, Research Ethics Committee, and to the approving authority. Once the sponsor, the principal investigator, the chairman of the HREC, and the person responsible from the approving authority have signed the CTN form, it is submitted by the sponsor of the trial to the TGA along with the appropriate notification fee. Great. So what is the meaning out of it? CTX and CTN. In CTX, trial sponsor notifies the TGA of their intention to why they are conducting this clinical trial. Right? And in CTN, what happens? The TGA does not review any data relating to the clinical trial, but the CTN form is submitted by the investigator on behalf of sponsor to the HREC, okay, Human Research Ethics Committee, and to approving authority. Once the sponsor, the principal investigator, the chairman of HREC, and the person responsible from the approving authority have signed the CTN form. It is submitted by the sponsor of the trial okay, to TGA. So here the main difference is given. You can see the difference between CTN and CTX. Okay, CTN is just a notification process, whereas CTX is what? Approval process. CTN is one-step process to notify, and here it is two-step process, that is, 
पार्ट वन इज अप्रूवल पार्ट टू इज नोटिफिकेशन थ्री टी एन कैन बी यूज फॉर मेडिसिन डिवाइस और बायोलॉजिकल्स वेर एज सी टी एक्स कैन बी यूज फॉर मेडिसिन डिवाइस और बायोलॉजिकल्स बट रिक्वायर्ड फॉर क्लास फोर बायोलॉजिकल्स then no tga review of data prior to trial uh, here tga must evaluate and approve okay then trial cannot commence without valid notification and fee paid under ctn whereas here trial cannot commence without part 1 being approved okay then uh, under ctn assurances pertaining to the trial conduct and protocols are provided by the sponsor hrc pi and ia whereas assurance pertaining to the trial conducting what protocol are provided by the sponsor so i am going to share these slides with you guys you can read it later on and try to understand although i think you must be having clinical uh, trial syllabus as a separate topic and in which uh, uh, the faculty will uh, have more focus towards the clinical trials am i right yes ma'am correct na so under clinical trial we want to spend more time because that is totally different topic and it's it's again a big area of clinical trials yeah so uh, about prescription drugs how they are ca uh, categorized category 1 2 and 3 so under category 1 uh, it includes what application includes new chemical entities new dosage form new strains and new generic products and significant variation to an existing application whereas category 2 can only be utilized when an application has been previously accepted in two countries okay like mrp what we discussed right so requires shorter time frame for evaluation and category 3 means what involve changes to the quality data of medicine already included on the artg site So do not need to be supported by clinical, non-clinical, or bioequivalence data. Example: the shelf life and the storage condition, labeling and packaging replacement trade name. So category three means what? You have already registered the product, okay? And it is under life cycle management, okay? Suppose there are changes happening to your product with respect to shelf life, storage condition, or any label change or package change, then only you can go through this. you know minor change information under the category 3 so in brief category 1 is for entire new molecule okay the new chemical that is nce new chemical entity or new dosage form new strain or new generic product okay this is category 1 category 2 means what you are already known uh, you, you can uh, you have your application already uh, 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 applied through previous two countries and in you got the approval okay so you can go under category 2 so that the time is less required for this approval and three means what you have already done everything and uh, only for the changes and maintaining that license you are going through category 3 so this is a flow chart you have to read it carefully uh, uh, i will give you few seconds you can just read and later on once you get this um, document you can just understand but entire uh, regulatory system i hello vandana you have to understand so tga again uh, i would say tga europe usa all they accept e ctd application e ctd means electronic common technical document i think ctd e ctd is also included in your uh, syllabus because whatever uh, dossier you are uh, submitting to different agencies under regulated countries you have to submit in into ctd e ctd format okay ctd is common technical document e ctd is electronic common technical document. so you have to uh, apply through this okay and then simple application entry review evaluation by tga or external auditors 
okay and then review is done like quality review non clinical review clinical review and you get the review report right from the three different departments and then they delegate delegate seek advice from medic this committee okay and then they review and delegate request to adc advice and sponsor comments before making the recommendation and then you get the final report and gets the product approval so it is pretty simple if if under this review suppose if anyone rejects your uh, uh, dossier with whatever justification you must have given what happens you can appeal or reapply if it is rejected if it is approved there is no question okay but entire you know entire just hold on i'm getting on hello ha kitne baje ha theek hai theek hai bolo हाँ, हाँ. So, uh, see, uh, like like okay? Because category three is simple, no? Variation and uh, this uh, change in uh, whatever the quality of label, packaging. so when you go for category 3 application uh, goes for the review evaluation is done by tg and uh, or external auditor if it is accepted it goes to the ne next cycle if it is not accepted you have to reapply of course correct so quality review non clinical clinical review the review report is uh, given if it is approved go to this uh, artg you know entry updated with the new changes and if it is rejected application applicant may appeal or reapply easy to understand with the flow chart say yes or no yes ma'am correct here i forgot to mention uh, if you want to call for pre submission meeting na with the tga uh, you can uh, you know uh, go for pre uh, submission meeting also if not required simply you submit the dossier and uh, entire process will happen as per this flow chart uh, sometimes what happens under evaluation uh, of your uh, uh, dossier they may ask for the additional data you know uh, the deficiency may arise so as for their requirement uh, their gap analysis you have to provide all those documents with respect to quality safety and efficacy so this module 4 and module 5 talks about what safety that is non clinical review and the clinical review whereas module 3 always talks about quality review why i have written this module 3 4 5 because this e ctd comprises of five module okay module 1 is administrative module 2 is quality oral summary module 3 is cmc that is quality module 4 non clinical and module 5 it is clinical i hope it is pretty clear do you need any uh, break in between hello yes ma'am do you need yes. break or shall i continue ma'am you can continue i will continue thank you you are not uh, getting uh, bored or you are not you are attentive i hope i hope so yes ma'am all are listening and who is the uh, class representative who is going to take the attendance today's attendance uh ma'am it's going to be me gaurav gaurav okay gaurav so what i will do after our session i will uh, stop you know 5 minutes early and i will uh, post this google link so that you can fill up and make your presence yeah so i have made the google form also but i will send the link after the lecture so what you learned so far so now
tell me what you learned just to recap um, registration process uh, for uk and australia correct and before that what you learned what is the definition of regulatory affairs collecting analyzing and communicating risks and benefit with different regulatory bodies of the world right collect its main objectives yeah. hmm correct and key functions perfect so i hope you understood the responsibility roles of each agency plus the roles and responsibility of regulatory affair professional as well what they have to do like when they get the job as a regulatory affair executive or officer or whatever right yes ma'am so moving forward uh, we will uh, discuss about registration process in brazil you know where this brazil comes under which part of the continent south america latin america yeah america. so it is usually uh, called as latam latin america okay under latam the brazil mexico and uh, some other countries falls okay so their agency is anvisa brazil is also a big body and the health authority or the agency is called as anvisa So Brazil is biggest country of South America. Some of the small countries nearby Brazil are all following rules according to NVISA. NVISA means what? Agencia Nacional de Vigilancia Sanitaria. This abbreviation is in Portuguese because they use Portuguese language. Okay. So in English, what is the meaning of this Portuguese NVISA? It's a National Health Surveillance Agency. okay or sometimes it is written as brazilian health surveillance agency clear and visa yes ma'am yeah because because of vigilancia sanitaria that visa v i s a okay and a n is agencia national d so in portuguese and in english you should understand what is the brazil health authority is anvisa so the national health surveillance agency was established in 1999 by president fernando enrique cardoso you should not remember all this but anvisa is the major health, main agency for brazil you should remember what is the responsibility of brazil monitoring drug prices prices of medical devices control and inspection of smoking products technical support in granting of patents by the national institute of industrial property protection of the health of the population by exercising sanitary control over the production marketing of products and services subject to sanitary surveillance controlling ports airports and borders right and linked to the brazilian ministry of foreign affairs and foreign institutions over matters concerning international aspects of sanitary surveillance pretty easy understanding see uh, whatever drugs devices and are registered under anvisa will be controlled by this health authority so how you register new drug okay what are the registration procedure followed as per anvisa so registration procedure of new drug it is mainly divided in three parts as follows first pre registration measures that is you have to submit protocol for your clinical study correct right? we are talking about new drug huh? so new drug always uh, whenever you want to enter uh, newly into market with the new drug then you have to follow entire procedure of like Uh, we submit nda application to us fda correct because new drug itself is a very exhaustive procedure in which we follow 
all phase one, two, three clinical trials. Correct. And that's why these three parts are very important. First is pre-registration measures, wherein protocol for clinical studies provided. Then uh, under uh, second part, the registration documents to be submitted. Then protocols for new drug and protocol for import of new drugs. Then the post-registration, what? Alteration in registration, renewal of registration. So three parts are what? Pre-registration, registration, and the post-registration. So these three parts can be considered similar to our IND, NDA, and supplementary NDA as per US FDA. Okay. What is IND? Investigational new drug application. What is ANDA or NDA? New drug application. And ANDA is abbreviated new drug application. So these are the common terms used in USA. So which is US Health Authority? US FDA. Okay. So under US FDA, you have to submit different application called RND, NDA, ANDA. BLA is what? Biological. So what the pre-registration measures you have to take? In case of new national drug product, the protocol of the clinical studies and the results or current status of the studies in compliance with the legislation in force has to be submitted. And in case of new imported drug product that will undergo phase three clinical studies in Brazil, the study protocol and the results or the current status of the studies in compliance with the legislation in force has to be submitted. Okay. And whenever phase three will take place with a new product manufactured in the country, pre-notification for the production of pilot batch according to the guide for notification of pilot batch of medicine has to be submitted. Okay. So how this pre-registration major takes place that is explained in this slide. Now come to the second that is registration. What kind of documents are submitted under registration? First, registration petition form, proof of payment, copy of company's operation license, right? Manufacturing license, test license, like that. And the technical responsibility certificate by the Regional Pharmacy Council. Copy of your notification pro protocol of pilot batch production and your GMP certificate emitted by the NVSA. Under protocol for new drug, what, what all things are go, goes? Can Gaurav read for this slide? Second and third slide. Yes, ma'am. So for registration, mm -hmm. second is the protocol for the new drug. Mm -hmm. General data, the package, insert text, label, etc. should be mentioned. Expiry date by stability studies. All toxicity study reports. Clinical trial data with statistical treatment for combination. Maximum three is allowed for oral or injectable preparation. Four combinations are allowed only if the fourth ingredient is caffeine. Physiochemical parameters of the drug, synthesis route, all reagent, solvent, and condition. And the pharmacodynamic parameters, pharmacokinetic parameters, production report, QC of raw material, and finished product. Correct. Now, continue. Yes. And the third is the protocol for the import of new drug. GMP of importing country or inspection by ANVISA, A-N-V-I-S-A. Uh, the documentation is allowed in Portuguese, or English, or Spanish language. Label, package, insert must be in Portuguese, Brazilian language. Official documents like certificates given by important importing country if it is in foreign language that must be translated with legal translator only in some cases applicator wants to import bulk drugs from foreign and then pack the product in brazil in such cases expiry date must be counted from manufacturing date in foreign and not the packaging date in brazil very good now can kruti read post registration majors yes ma'am 
any registration changes shall follow the procedure specified in the guide for making post registration alteration and inclusions in medicine and visa may undertake a control analysis of commercialized batches in official laboratories in other in order to monitor the quality and conformity of the drug with the drug registered whenever necessary and visa may request that the companies train techni uh, train their technicians in order to enable them to undertake this monitoring okay okay great so i hope it is pretty clear about brazilian procedure yes ma'am so i will just for your recap i will again uh, you know display the slides okay so brazil the health authority is called what anvisa okay then anvisa is responsible you know the same quality safety efficacy and all uh, monitoring prices of medical devices and their drug product correct marketing and other services which are linked to brazil then registration takes place in three parts one is pre registration second is registration third is post registration okay so uh, the difference between three also you have understood and similar to us fda there are different kinds of application like ind nda nda is submitted okay and this uh, on this we have explained about the pre registration measures then the registration measures and what post registration measures okay now we move slowly slowly towards canada so canadian health authority is called health canada okay so what is uk health authority can you can someone tell uk health authority and what is australian health authority called tga tga correct so you learnt tga you learnt mhra and what else you learnt and visa brazilian and visa so three countries that's a big achievement in the first lecture itself correct yes ma'am <laughs> good and what is indian health authority is called cdsu perfect i am so happy that you are attentive okay now we move towards canada canadian health authority is called health canada okay so again kruti or someone i need fifth volunteer now to keep you Alive, yeah. To keep you awake, who is fifth person who can read? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What is your name? I'm I'm Kruti only. <laughs> Kruti, Kruti. Can someone else read? if not then kruti you can please yes ma'am yeah drugs are authorized for sale in canada once they have successfully gone through the drug review process this process is the means by which a drug application is reviewed by scientists in the health products and food branch hpfb of health canada and on occasion outside experts to assess the safety efficacy and quality of a drug mm. health canada's hpfb is the national authority that regulates evaluates and monitors the safety efficacy and quality of therapeutic and diagnostic products available to canadians these products include drug medical device disinfectants and sanitizers with disinfectant claims throughout the process the safety and well being of canadians is the paramount paramount concern correct 
so as i mentioned any health authority's main objective is what to protect public health and safety is the major concern correct so health canada also uh, uh, monitor what drugs and what else drugs medical devices disinfectants and sanitizers correct so all these products are monitored uh, rather regulated under health canada will remember you will remember na yes ma'am and uh, the health product and the food branch it is called hpfb okay of health canada so regulatory process for drugs in canada how it uh, goes like this it, the exhibit shows the steps in the regulatory process for drugs in canada from pre market to post market similarly yeah, everywhere it goes from pre market to post market so the pre market part of the process starts with the pre clinical studies and for pre clinical studies these are the steps okay so pre clinical studies mein kya hota hai like clinical trials regulatory product submission submission review market authorization decision public access surveillance inspection and investigation and then the post market part of the process begins with surveillance inspection and investigation when drug has been made accessible to the public so more or less like 80 90% of these steps are same for each country yeah whether it is tga whether it is brazil whether it is canada whether it is usa so always whenever you want to launch your product or whenever you want to get entry into any market you have to you know go for the pre clinical the clinical trials then the regulatory product submission then the submission review happens correct then the regulatory uh, reviewers will give the decision they will provide the report whether it is acceptable or not and then it make uh, it is made to the public you know access that means it will be published if you see uh, us fda ema or health canada website whatever product gets the uh, approval it is published on the daily basis you know so sandoz has got the approval for you know uh, uh, say for example tetramycin or whichever drug they get the approval it will be published so daily you should visit all the websites and see what are the information available on daily basis similarly our cdsu site also you can visit and see uh, for you know what are the drugs are available or any new guidance is published or not so this is what uh, the pre market to post market uh, flow chart and uh, different types of submission uh, are available under health canada which is called as uh, for the new drug it is nds that is new drug submission nds okay so nds requires almost 300 calendar days for the approval so nds is required for what new drugs that have not been sold in canada for sufficient time and in sufficient quantity to establish their safety and effectiveness so it it includes what it includes what clinical trial information and details on production packaging labeling condition for use and side effects there is supplemental new drug uh, submission that is sndes okay nds later on it is supplemental means sndes when it is required if substantial changes are made to the drug previously approved as a new drug submission including dosage form drug strain method of manufacturer labeling or manufacturer wish to expand the disease or condition the product is approved to treat correct so this also requires 300 calendar days now we come to abbreviated new drug submission a n d s where in same application in us fda it is called a n d a okay 
here it is a and d s this is required for what generic drugs you know the difference between generic and branded can someone explain me you know the difference between generic drug and the branded drug can gaurav kruti or anyone else pooja what is the difference between generic and the branded drug tell me ma'am a branded drug is something which is sold under the brand name and which is patented by that brand and a generic drug is a drug uh, which is easily available like uh, without any brand or something okay can anyone else add to this anyone else ma'am generics are available at a cheaper price because they use cheaper substituents for the vehicles vehicle and excipient so branded has like a proper formula that is registered by the brand but generics will have the same api and different excipients for the same drug no when you enter into generic market like anda it's not the cheaper or costly you know it it has to be exactly same molecule with respect to your label claim you know it, it is the same drug same api identical dosage form and everything okay only uh, why it is cheaper than the branded because branded drug is a new innovative formulation and to enter into market they have taken 10 to 12 years okay because to get into a new drug development itself you must have seen there are pre clinical phases clinical phases so entire 12 to 15 12 sometimes 15 years goes for one nda or one nc correct and the cost is depending on those 3 year sorry 12 years correct which is invested by the innovator whereas when we talk about generics we don't have to go with the entire pre clinical or the clinical studies and we don't have to invest 12 to 15 years that much money is saved but you can copy cat you know you copy the same molecule as good as nda and additionally you have to perform the bab studies the bioequivalent studies and you have to prove that your drug is bioequivalent to the innovator drug so why this is the major difference between the generic and the innovator is the cost and time because you need not to wait for 12 to 15 years how the innovator has waited to bring that molecule into market okay this is first thing second thing is entirely same as per hatch waxman act whenever you want to enter into market with the generic application you should select the molecule the api same you know the dosage form like 10 mg 20 mg or 40 mg say okay the dose and the dosage form like tablet capsule or any any kind of formulation should be same okay only difference is you need not to go for clinical trials with phase 1 2 3 but you have to go for bioequivalence studies and you have to prove that your product is bioequivalent and that's how it takes only 180 calendar days to get the marketing approval for generic application okay so being a pharmacist being a regulatory professional you have to understand the difference between the branded drug and the innovator drug okay the uh, sorry branded is only innovator the generic drug and the innovator drug or the branded i hope it is pretty clear now the difference yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah 
and of course you as someone said uh, the intellectual property rights that is patent okay the patent goes with the branded product because they have invested 12 to 15 years so they go for the patent they get the exclusive right okay so 20 years from the date of application when they start their development okay so coming to a n d s or a n d a in us fda you have to submit and it include evidence that generic is equivalent to the existing patented drug which is your innovator right it delivers the same amount of medicinal ingredient at the same rate correct so c max you know the c max the area under the curve that is the part of your drug delivery that is bioequivalence bioavailability so here the rate you know the same rate is very important as per the innovator your drug which is a generic drug should elude the same amount at the same rate okay and this application you get the approval within 180 calendar days then go for supplemental anda or supplemental ands okay it again required if at all any changes made to your generic product okay so suppose over the period of time you change the method of manufacture or any label recommended by any health authority or sometimes what happens you change the route of administration now suppose if you want to go from tablet to syrup you you want to go from tablet to capsule then in that case you have to submit the supplement or additional indication or new indication right now suppose aspirin in old age aspirin we used to use for as a an antipyretic analgesic you know the aspirin hello yes ma'am correct so aspirin was used as a anti uh, analgesic or antipyretic but nowadays aspirin is used for what tell me what is it used for in heart patient it helps in thinning of your blood am i right So yes, ma'am. As aspirin is used in antihypertensive, so as an antihypertensive, uh, along with, of course, lovastatin or any statin drugs, atorvastatin, lovastatin, or any rosuvastatin. So you should remember that when it talks about a new indication, that means or additional indication, means what? It has multiple uses. so aspirin is used as an analgesic antipyretic but simultaneously it can be used for thinning of your blood for you know heart patient so when this supplemental uh, abbreviated new drug submission goes in case of route of administration changes in case of label changes in case of your method of manufacture changes or in case of new indication clear then come to otc yes, then come to otc okay so din is your drug identification number so din application is used most commonly for otc that have been established safety records but that require additional supporting data and a clinical review a din f application is used mostly commonly for otc that comply with existing drug labeling and that do not require additional supporting scientific data so in din also there are two type din din a and din f correct a is used for otc wherein you require additional supporting data okay whereas din f is what you do not require the supporting scientific data so that is why here the number of days are 45 and where you require the clinical data or the clinical review 
the number of days are 210. You know the difference between OTC and uh, our uh, normal prescription drug? Anyone knows the difference between Rx and OTC? OTC Hello? drug we can keep uh, without prescription. Yeah, with prescription and without prescription. You are right. That means OTC drug can be bought from any medical shop or any uh, outlet, okay, uh, without any doctor's prescription. If you want to hear uh, the exact uh, terminology or exact uh, information uh, you want to learn, you can go through YouTube my Rajasri Oja YouTube channel and you will find you know more information on OTC so submission type and their description post market changes that is CMC that is chemistry or manufacturing changes so whenever manufacturer has CMC related changes they have to inform to Health Canada Okay, and in case of say, uh, this adverse event, adverse effect also, they have to inform to Health Canada. And this type of application uh, is required 90 days. Then any product labeling change or monograph change also you can report to Health Canada. It also requires 90 days. Okay. And this is exactly the Canadian drug review process happens. Okay. So under drug development, uh, Health Canada reviews your application with respect to quality, safety and efficacy. Okay. And then the patented medicine price review board for the pricing. Then health technology assessment takes place. Correct. And then, you know, it goes to hospital and the patient has access. The flowchart continues. Health Canada approves drug for sale in Canada. Then the manufacturer submits clinical and economic evidence to justify public funding. Right? So new drug, drugs with new indication. This is cancer drug. So how it happens, it is given. So we'll stop here uh, because Japan uh, is um, also uh, one of the health authority and which is uh, more um, critical, I would say. Uh, and uh, on first day, uh, I, I won't, you know, uh, go into the complicated system so let us stop here and we will have uh, some question answer session and followed by our attendance okay thank you very much for your kind attention oh uh, ma'am may i post the link in the chat box yes please